having defined the commutative as well as the associative properties <clears throat> let us go ahead and give a very general definition of what an identity element is right so so we are trying to define definition of identity element identity element right so okay so if we have now for for a given binary operation so for a given binary operation star from a cross a to a right an element e belonging to a right this also should belong to a right an element this if it exists it may also not exist if it exists is called the identity element is called an identity element okay e for the operation for the operation star if a operated with e gives you a and also e operated on a gives you a so what does e do this e actually does not change the identity of this a it lets it be as it is understand <clears throat> it lets it be as it is and a star e as well as e star a both should yield you the same okay so so let us say let let addition on the set of real numbers be defined right then 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 pick up any any number amongst this real these real numbers this add so that it remains a and also that added with a remains this so so what should come in the in in the blank that i've left it should be zero right so what is small a small a is any real number right so so small a is any real number now with the normal algebraic addition what should i add to this real number so that its identity does not change that means the result is the real number itself it is zero zero yes. So zero is called zero is called the additive identity. Additive and subtractive. Additive identity. You aren't just. It is about... not a subtractive identity. Why? 
because because a minus zero is a, but but, zero but, zero. but that is not equal to zero minus a. So yeah. it is not a subtractive identity, right? So this is not a subtractive identity. Do we get the point? Mm. Right? Now there is a technical thing that you should understand. This is a very important thing that has been stated. If I ask you whether is zero an additive identity identity for for n the set of natural numbers because because we see that i pick up a natural number say say 5 and add 0 to it it gives me 5 5 and also if i add 0 to 5, five. it gives See. me 5 so so it is an ad additive identity in the first glance but actually it is not why why is it not an additive identity here because this number that you call as an additive additive identity should belong to the set which you are defining and zero is not a natural number zero does not belong to the set of natural numbers so even though everything seems to be in place this will be a wrong answer get that every subtle thing in mathematics has got its connotation understand so so an element E should belong to E, then only it qualifies to be an identity element. Right? Let us come to let us come to multiplication, the way we know the multiplication, right? So so multiplication. What happens? Multiplication cross on the set of real numbers. What happens? Right? So 1 into A into 1, okay, is A and also 1 into A is A. So 1 is the, is the multiplicative identity. It is the multiplicative identity, right? But on the set of real numbers. This is also <laughs> multiplication defined on natural numbers is also a multiplicative identity. One is so for all a multiplicative identity there as so well. So for everything one is a multiplicative identity even for real numbers. Uh, real number or natural number or whole oh, number no. or an integer. Yes, it is. Fine. <clears throat> or for a rational number. Is it a multiplicative identity on the set of irrational numbers? One. Yeah. No. no. So the set on which things are being defined, they become very, very important. And you should never lose sight of that. Correct? Now, in, in the same strain, I move ahead and, and we have been discussing the, the identity functions right now you see that a function operates on x and does not change its identity okay so this function becomes the identity function the identity function Okay. And how is it an identity function? If you define it like this, then let us try to see. Take any function and 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 what do you do? Where, how do the functions act over another? That is by the by the operation called the composition of the functions, right? So if g 
acts on if if x then what happens this is defined as g f x which is by definition fx is x so g remains so what happens g has acted on this but still yielded yielded gx okay so gx has remained gx correct so 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 that's why this is an this is an identity function F but then you should identity. not lose sight of the other thing it is like this so let this identity function also act on g and let us see whether what we get is the same thing so f acting on g is kind of by definition this and if if instead of x i put gx this becomes nothing but gx so the identity of gx did not get altered fine so so fx is an identity fx is equal to x is an identity function we get the point same with matrices okay we have seen in matrices that or or, or you later see because that that may come after this so so if you have a matrix say 2 3 4 5 let's say and how do matrices add matrices add simply algebraically right so so what do i add they are they add number by number so if i put this then this matrix becomes 2 2 gets added to this so this is 2 plus 0 this is 0 this is not 6 right so 2 plus 0 is 2 and 3 plus 0 is 3 plus 0 is 3 and and, and 4 plus 0 is 4 and 5 plus 0 is 5 so so this matrix did not get altered correct so this becomes the additive identity additive identity with respect to the with matrix. respect to the matrix addition right matrix addition okay do we get the point fine next we'll go on to next we'll go on to next we'll go on to the concept called the inverse of an element okay inverse of an element in a given set